Speaking of red pill topics, um, I saw a video, first video in a long time, from Chris D'Elia the other day. And if you guys don't know who he is, Chris D'Elia is a you know fairly famous comedian. And I actually think he's hysterical. I actually love his stand-up comedy and some of his web stuff too. It's actually you know really funny stuff. Uh, but he's gotten into quite a bit of scandal in the past year. He's kind of getting me too'd where uh, you know, I guess he's behaved very inappropriately with certain women. He's uh, been accused of grooming women, um, all kinds of stuff. And I don't know the details. He's maintained that he's never done anything illegal or non-consensual. Um, I don't know. I'm not going to make any sort of you know, stance on that. I don't know what he did, but he does seem to have admit that a lot of what he did was wrong, even if it wasn't illegal. Okay. And talking about status, like in this video is kind of like his first video back explaining where he's at, apologizing essentially. And I thought it was actually one of the, uh, the better celebrity apologies for this sort of behavior. Uh, and what he talks about is like, you know, sex has always like dominated his life, right? He said, he said it was, his life was always about that. You know, it was like his focus. It was life controlling, he said. And as he started to gain some notoriety through his comedy, it, having sex just got a lot, a lot easier. Now, why do you think that is, right? Well, it's everything that we just talked about in uh, the Red Pill um uh, episode where, you know, his status went up and he was already, you know, extremely charismatic and he's, you know, fit. I wouldn't say he's the best looking guy, but, you know, he's not ugly. And <laughs> the other aspects of his character are all there. You know, he's he's famous. He's rich. He's, you know, in relatively good shape. He's, you know, very funny, that sort of thing. And so, you know, once once all that hit, the fame hit, like he could just have sex in any city. Right. He could just go roll into a city, do a show and then have sex afterward with whoever he wanted. And like he got hooked on it, basically, you know, it was kind of like how I think would would happen with a lot of guys, like a lot of guys who've never really invested in looking at their sexuality uh, and understanding it and mastering it, you know, anything like that. Then I think this is what a lot of guys would do. It's like if they did have access to unlimited pretty women, would they have sex with them? Yeah, probably. <laughs> I know me before I like I went through all this kind of transformational stuff, I would, you know, hopefully I wouldn't do the stuff that he's been accused of. Um, but, you know, I definitely would be trying to have that sex. And, uh, you know, he said that uh, he wouldn't have stopped unless something like this happened to him, basically getting called out and shunned publicly and that sort of thing. And, you know, he, he was cheating, you know, he was cheating on his current fiance and, you know, other women that he was with. And, uh, he just, you know, didn't really have much control of himself. And I actually have a little bit of respect for him for not just like coming on and crying and saying, like, Oh, I'm a sex addict. I'm getting help. Please forgive me. Oh, I'm free from like, it's just a problem, blah, blah, blah. He like, he took pretty good ownership of it and, uh, didn't really make any excuses. So, you know, my hope is that he's actually genuinely like looking at this stuff and getting help and like really working on it. Um, but the thing that I think is interesting is looking at like, what are the options then for a guy like this, right? Like if a guy is, um, you know, powerful, you know, rich, uh, attractive, you know, basically able to have this kind of sex, like what are his options? Well, one is he can kind of just do what Chris did, just kind of live sort of riskily. And then at that point, eventually you're going to get caught, you know, in today's culture, eventually it's going to come out and you're going to get screwed in some form or another. And if you care at all about your reputation, then you probably want to avoid that. If you're just a sociopath, well, then you don't really care too much as long as you don't get in legal trouble, right? So if you're a sociopath, then it's just a matter of being careful, right? <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, another option would be, uh, you know, maybe just never become successful. You know, this is <laughs> a lot of the guys, I think, who say that they would never do something like that. Um, 
you know, there are genuinely good people out there who would never do such a thing. But there's also a good crossover between the people who would say that and people who would never be successful anyway. In order to be successful, you got to be honest with your drives and you got to be willing to, to want something very intensely. And I found that guys who are like that, they are very much in touch with their sexuality, even if they're not in control of it. And so, you know, you could just not be successful. But, you know, I think that's that's not a good option either. So I think the best thing then is you got to develop sexual self-mastery. And, and this is something actually that I've been uh, criticized by uh, one of my members of the Vanguard for in, in the, the Red Pill Playbook series that I'm in, that I haven't talked about kind of like the spiritual component of things. And I haven't in part because, you know, I'm trying to keep that series very rational, but I think it's very important here, right? The idea is that we all have, we're, we're essentially like desire generators. We, we all have like the desire for infinite pleasure. We all want heaven. That's what we're wired for. As soon as we get to someplace good, we can imagine someplace better and then we want that, right? It's rare those moments of fulfillment where we want nothing more. But even in those moments, we just don't want the moment to end, <laughs> right? So we always want more. That's what we want. We want perfect bliss, okay? And so in spiritual terms, this is the desire for heaven. This is the God-shaped hole inside of you. And the big mistake that we run into is when we try and project that desire for infinity onto some finite thing, okay? And the way that I think a lot of guys do this, this is the way that I definitely did this, is that I took this inherent desire and I tried to put it all on sexuality, okay? I thought sex was going to be my heaven. And the problem is it just doesn't work. No finite thing can hold infinity. And when you, like, make an idol out of something, it doesn't take you closer to heaven, actually just takes you on a road to hell. This is where addiction and, you know, crazy servitude and, you know, brainwashing and stuff comes from, right? And so, like, if you really want to be free, right, if you really want to, to be able to live with your sexuality well, you have to be able to, like, recognize that sex isn't going to be your heaven, and that might create a sense of loss inside of you, a sense of longing. You know, it's like <laughs> I had to deal with this even just around like freaking video games. You know, I spent like my whole life growing up thinking like, all right, all I want is to be able to have a lot of sex and play a lot of video games. And like <laughs> I've gotten pretty close to that at different points and neither time it was like satisfying. The more I got the thing, the more disenchanted and dissatisfied I, be, uh, I became because I realized these things are not heaven. They can't be. And so, like, you have to consent continuously want more, right? You have to continuously want a better and fuller life. And the only way that you can do that is by, like, allowing something to have its place but no greater than its place. You know, that's, that's what an addiction is in a lot of ways is it takes something good and lets it overflow in a dysfunctional, unhelpful manner. So, you know, I, I hope that uh, Chris is able to find peace with this kind of stuff and make progress with this kind of stuff because I know it's, uh, it's hard as shit to do it, you know, especially in the public eye. So, you know, the fact that, you know, uh, he can try, you know, I hope all the women and stuff that he's been involved with, they're all okay and everything too. But, uh, yeah, I think sadly this is not going to be the, the last of this sort of scenario that uh, – we see. <laughs> so, you know, I'm sure we'll keep talking about this.